Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. And now, the Friday Crime Report. The more we look at what online influencer culture is, the more we see all kinds of things wrong with the people in it. It's full of schemers, scammers, and even killers. You had that Nigerian who got stabbed to death by his blonde influencer gal pal as one case study. And we have a lot of black people who follow and fall for these people's snake oil. The fitness influencer hustle is a pit of vipers that not nearly enough people talk about. Basically, it's faking it until you make it, though the making it part is almost never done honorably. You got a whole bunch of people out here who are not selling success, they are actually selling the idea of success, which has turned out to be far more monetizable. And that brings us to Cat Torres, who was born Catuchia Torres Suarez. She's from Brazil, and she didn't grow up in wealth. Since Brazilians are considered exotic, she eventually went to Europe where she found steady work as a model and was on the cover of a few magazines. She inevitably came to the United States, though, seeking a career in modeling, acting, whatever, and hopefully a sugar daddy, too. Her high point in that particular regard was 11 years ago when she claimed to have a relationship with Leonardo DiCaprio, saying that the two of them met during the Cannes Film Festival, and apparently there was a photo or two of them at some event there. But she claimed that DiCaprio told her that they have to keep their relationship quiet. Perhaps that's because there's actually no real proof that the two of them were actually a couple, but she was grist for the gossip mill, so understand that. For the people out there who wonder, why is it that there's always a steady supply of young, pretty, single females who are at Vince like can and they're just there without a man of their own? This is what they're doing. Looking to throw their legs open for some rich or famous guy. It's clout chasing. But in her case, it worked because by name-dropping DiCaprio, she was able to yank herself out of obscurity and use the white media attention that she got to turbocharge her online influencer hustle. So while her acting career never panned out, she did put on a performance of sorts. She was able to parlay her modeling into a social media platform for herself on Instagram. And like any wannabe up-and-coming influencer, she staged images of wealth and success for herself And the poor souls online who desperately crave that kind of materialism soon flock to this bleach blonde bimbo. Mostly young women who were desperate to find out how to use their own looks to land some easy riches. And let's be honest, that's what drives the online success of people like Torres. She puts forward the image that all you gotta do is be photogenic by European standards, and you can eventually have people tripping over themselves to lay the world at your feet. So as she began to gain traction online, she also rebranded herself from being a fitness and modeling influencer to being a life coach and spiritual medium slash guru. She began getting heavy into hallucinogenics like ayahuasca, which is often used in tea and the people who use it claim to have reached higher planes of consciousness. She described herself as a witch at this point, and she wrote a book in 2017 called A Voice. By this point, she had over 1 million followers on Instagram, mostly Brazilian women, all hoping to be just like her. Seeing a chance to separate fools from their money, Torres began charging hundreds of dollars for so-called consultations and dating tips and other worthless advice. Torres had a large apartment in New York. Her live-in assistant described it as really messy, really dirty, didn't smell good. But Torres's descent into depravity was only just starting. The Brazilian teen girls and 20-somethings who saw her lavish lifestyle online were so desperate for her to let them in to be part of it. She promised them that she'd show them how to get married to successful men, even though she wasn't married to one, and they didn't have to do anything other than be pretty, just like her. She did it, and she could teach them how to run the same game. It's the oldest trick in the book, the classic something for nothing, a siren song which most of these young people today who spend way too much time online find irresistible. Torres snared a number of young women with these false promises. Two of them were Leticia Maya Alvarenga, age 21, and Desiree Fritas, age 25. Torres eventually got herself a mansion in Austin and began bringing a number of girls to live with her there. Now, the girls, they thought that it was going to be like a big clubhouse, basically a nonstop slumber party, but in reality, Torres was planning a prison. One of the girls named Sol said Torres kept them isolated and controlled every aspect of their daily lives, prohibiting them from speaking to one another and having to ask permission to leave their rooms, even to go to the bathroom. Torres began the work of stripping these girls of their individuality and identity. The two women had black-colored hair like most Brazilians, but Torres had them dye it blonde so they would look more like her. She also had their cell phone contacts blocked so they couldn't communicate with their family or friends. 
Torres promised to change these girls' lives, and she at least kept that promise. According to the women, Torres was pimping them out. Freitas had been working at a strip club, but Torres put her and Alvarenga on escort websites, demanding that they meet quotas for how much money they should bring in. First, the quota started off at $1,000 a day, then rose to $3,000 a day. And if the girls failed to make their quota, the punishment was to be put out on the street for the night. And this proved to be an effective form of control, considering that these girls were all foreigners, and not to mention Freitas was keeping their money. If the girls seemed to have second thoughts about whoring themselves out for her, Torres routinely threatened to turn them over to the police for prostitution, reminding them that prostitution is illegal in the United States. Naturally, Torres kept whatever money the girls made for herself, along with their passports and driver's licenses. There's also been accusations that Torres was using ayahuasca to keep the girls drugged and subdued. There were bizarre videos of the girls with them talking about alien baths and other odd rituals. Torres called her group of female captives her witch clan. So this situation went downhill real fast, from a scheme to help wannabe professional thoughts to a full-blown cult. Torres' former assistant, along with other people, began to tell law enforcement about Torres' activities in an attempt to get her arrested, but that pesky genetic immunity from law kept that from happening. Even as a foreigner, she had just enough of the complexion for the protection. By September of 2022, the parents of Alvarenga and Freitas began a social media campaign to find their girls, which got the attention of Brazilian talk shows, and this eventually led to one of Brazil's top models, Yasmin Brunet, who has 3.2 million followers on Instagram, deciding to take on Torres herself by ambushing her on a live stream and calling her out about the girls' disappearances, and demanding that the girls actually get on camera and show people their surroundings as a way to document whether or not they're being held against their wills. Alvarenga denied that any of this was happening, and she in fact accused Brunet of running a sex worker racket herself. Well, Brunet wasn't taking that lying down, so she made a police complaint against Alvarenga for defaming her. Torres really liked attention, but not this much, so at this point she decided to move from Austin to Maine, and she took her sex slaves with her. The FBI would eventually get involved in searching for the two women. Oh, when clout chasing goes wrong. By November of 2022, police had convinced Torres and the other two women to go to a sheriff's office for a wellness check. This would result in Torres being deported to Brazil due to her sketchy immigration status. And that was just the beginning of her problems because the federal authorities in Brazil had already issued arrest warrants for her on charges of human trafficking and slavery. Now, I think this would be a good time to note that in Brazil, this white Latina was charged and convicted of slavery. Meanwhile, in the U.S., you have documented cases like the one in West Virginia where black children were being held captive by these white supremacists and no one dares charge them with enslaving anyone. That's why you got things like the Mann Act or the so-called White Slavery Act, which is only applied when the victim is white. Now, in Brazil, while Torres was being arrested and charged, Freitas and Alvarenga had returned to their homeland, with Freitas writing a book about her experiences. On June 28th of this year, Torres was convicted of human trafficking and slavery. She told the BBC that at her trial, she saw so many people lying about her that at one point she couldn't stop laughing. At least that's what she said. Well, the judge certainly wiped that smile off her face when he sentenced her to eight years in prison. And there's also other ongoing investigations from other women who claim that Torres enslaved them. Almost two dozen, in fact. She's appealed the verdict, and it remains to be seen if her white privilege is going to kick in at some point. But of course, this is the first time that a woman's used her celebrity to trick other women into traps like this. Remember Alison Mack? She was the Smallville actress who joined a cult and was having women brought into it as sex slaves and getting branded by the cult leader. Mack would eventually be convicted of racketeering and conspiracy charges. Nothing about sex slavery, nothing about any of that. She was looking at 17 years in prison, but she turned state's witness against the cult leader and got a three-year sentence instead. She was out in only two because genetic immunity from law. So people in general, and women in specific, using fame as a means to manipulate people into these human trafficking rings, it's more common than you think. And these black celebrities trying to get in good with the white media, there's a lot about that world that no decent person should want to be a part of. Some folks have made their peace with selling their souls and their bodies. I'm not one of them, and I hope you aren't either. These influencers, these gurus telling you to give them money for one of their courses, this has become the online hustle. Buy my book, take my course, and I'll reveal all the secrets of how you can be like me. You go ahead and give me a couple hundred dollars and I'll do an online consultation with you. 
It seems no matter how many times these advice gurus run the same game, the marks never learn. Whenever you got these individuals saying, why don't you go ahead and give me some money and I'll tell you how to be like me, none of the marks ever seems to realize that the way these guys get what little money they claim to have is by selling these so-called courses. They didn't have the money and so they started doing that. These creeps make it a point to project having money. That's the bait they use to lure people in. In reality, a lot of them are either deeply in debt at best and couldn't come up with $100 to save their lives, or they're doing all kinds of things to keep up appearances. They make videos of themselves in fancy cars or on boats or other trappings of affluence, but it's all a front. They'll scream and yell at people that they can pull 50 grand out of their pocket like that. But when it comes time for them to do so, they immediately plead poverty and start splaining that all their little old money's tied up or this or that. You've probably seen articles or videos online of these people getting caught out. The ones who claim to be making or have millions of dollars, those are some of the worst offenders in this regard. You can't afford to believe what you see these people saying online. They're selling a fantasy. But sadly, too many people are only too eager to be marooned on their island. The allure of easy money is enough to get some folks to fall for anything. They become trapped because they were trying to find a way to get something for nothing. And this is why these pop culture and celebrity relationship gossip mills are so dangerous. Young women from around the world see these females who are famous for nothing, and they think they have some football player or big actor who they hobnob with, and these girls all think that they're special somehow and that they can do the same thing, even though only a handful have ever managed it, and even then not for long. If only someone could get them in front of the right parties, they think, introduce them to the right, well-heeled men, and that makes them easy marks for the cat tourists of this world. Social media is largely artificial. People letting themselves get suckered into these schemes by professional BS artists who promise to make them rich and glamorous, and best of all, they can get it for free. Well, there's an old saying, if someone is offering you something for free, that means you're the product. And that's this week's Friday Crime Report. Keep your eyes open and stay on alert, because there's a lot worse criminals out there than the ones the white corporate media chooses to show you. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Mouse, Ginger Vine, Sula Manalaji, DSC Bland, and Glenda Tice. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.